A solar panel on the top of my RV is a sexy topic, no doubt about it. Another sexy topic is a lithium equipped coach running house appliances in the coach off a big lithium battery. Today, I'm gonna to show you electricity running through my system, appliances consuming that energy, and stay to the end, I'm gonna give you a hot topic, how to extend the life of your lithium battery running your AC. Let's go. Howdy, welcome to my YouTube channel, Go Small, Live Large, a YouTube channel dedicated to the Class B, that'd be a van, a lifestyle. What we do here is we learn together, we share together, you decide what's the best way for you to RV. If you're not familiar with me, my name is Scott, and I've had my Winnebago Travato GL, been living in it full time since February 2019, and I have owned it now for three years. Lithium can be kind of confusing to uh, some folks, and today I want to demystify a little bit of that for you while providing some education and some tips on how to extend the life of your air conditioner if you're running off a lithium battery. So you want to stay tuned to the very end for that tip. And this video is sponsored by Volta. Volta is the engineering firm and the manufacturing firm of the Volta Pure 3 lithium system that goes into Winnebago Travato, Bolt, the Storyteller Overland rigs, and Tiffin, and a growing list of really great RV manufacturers. Though this video is sponsored by Volta, don't get me wrong, I'm gonna give you the straight scoop like I always do. And if you enjoy this content, the next Volta sponsored video is gonna be about charging your system that would be putting energy into the pack, the battery, and solar and its impact on a lithium system. You don't wanna miss that. Subscribe to the channel, comment below, Give it a thumb up if you learn anything from this video. Let's jump into it. Welcome inside my rig. Glad to have you inside. So Volta makes this whole system really, really simple. Like, really simple. It's one button to turn it on or off. That would be the entire Volta system. One analog state of charge SOC gauge. Think of that as the fuel gauge in your vehicle. F is full, E is empty. Same thing with this. 100% is full. 0% say a charge, that would be empty. However, it's so simple that some people actually want to see what's going on with their system. Volta has developed an app for iOS and Android on a phone device or a tablet. And with your app, you're able to manage your electrical system even more finely tuned. How much charge is left? How many days will that go? Is it charging? What is actually consuming energy? Just so you have a better understanding of the whole system. That's what I wanna show you today. So going here to my iPad, what I wanna do is search for uh, the App Store. Volta. Power system, see that right there? Touch that. And here is the app. Now I've already obviously downloaded mine. So when I touch open, it's going to open in the app itself. And there we go. So allow me to explain what we're looking at here. So this is a, their logo. It's a visualization of the state of charge. So you can actually see it's red, yellow, and then it gets green. If I move this, I can actually see the SOC gauge, state of charge gauge, which is behind me, which is um, a representation of the analog gauge. I have a 30%, 36% state of charge remaining, and I have estimated power under current load level of until 6.30 uh, this morning. The battery pack temperature is 79 degrees, and we're currently looking at a 253 watt outflow, meaning discharge, coming from the, the battery pack. I'm gonna to touch that, and that reveals kind of an EKG, electrocardiogram, of what is going on with the system. So you can see there's some peaks highs and some peak lows, and what that represents is devices consuming power from the energy pack. And you can see the digital representation here. Now this is with the inverter on, and if I look at the last 24 hours, this being the last 24 hours that I've had the app open, which is since about 9 a.m. this morning, you see some green spikes. That's where we've been charging by driving around, and we've seen some pretty low points here, 1,200, uh, 1100 watts coming off the app from devices consuming energy. On. So what's going on here is that the inverter charger, which in my unit resides under the jump seat. Now this is a 2019 Winnebago Travato G floor plan, L for lithium, thank you Volta. But the 3600 watt pure sign inverter charger sits in this cabinet in the current version of the G floor plan that's actually in the back of the rig and the K floor plan, it's under one of the beds. And in the Storyteller, 
it's in the back of the unit. The important thing here is understand is that Volta wants you to have a shore power type experience wherever you are. With a 3600 watt inverter, I can run multiple power hungry appliances at once. But to do that, it needs to be in a state of readiness. With the inverter on, it's ready to go at a moment's notice. Think of it as your truck. You put the key into the ignition, you start the ignition, put your foot on the brake, you put it into drive, foot still on the brake, you're consuming 500 RPMs, and the minute you take your foot off the brake, the truck is in motion forward. That's the job of the inverter charger, in addition to converting direct current to alternating current, so that when you hit the AC, when you hit the microwave, those things simultaneously, because this inverter charger is so large. And in the state of readiness, it's consuming about 250 to 300 watts. We saw that inside, and here we can see it again. Now because of that, in this current state, um, I can go without running AC, microwave, coffee pots, big power hungry appliances, I can go for about a day with having the inverter on, not plugged into shore power, and not moving, not driving to charge. So what we do is we recommend Volta on, the inverter on or off. All right, so we've seen that the inverter takes energy to be in a state of readiness. What I want to do now is use my app for the AirXL rooftop con uh, air conditioner. Um, this is Bluetooth enabled, love this. So I'm setting this to cool high. I'm gonna say set, and then we're gonna let the system run for a second. And now I can hear it running in the background. Let's swap back to Volta here and we can see that the energy consumption is getting quite large now. We're up to 1,200 almost watts. You see that? And you see the big dive in the EKG line here, if you will, showing that we're consuming now 1,200 watts, basically, um, by running the air conditioner. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch camera positions, and I'm going to punch the microwave button so you can see that it runs a very consumptive AC and the um, microwave at the same time, which is why Volt is pretty awesome, one of the reasons. So keep an eye on this as I jump in and hit the microwave button. Again, we're at 1200 currently. We're going to run the microwave for just a few seconds, so don't panic. Um, so now we're at consuming 18, 19, 21, 23, 24, 2500 watts with the microwave running and the AC running. I still have a thousand watts of energy available to me to run coffee pots, charging my phones, etc. Pretty amazing, right? And now you can see with the microwave off that we're back down to 1200 watts. Now my system's a little bit of an older uh, system, one of the first um, few dozen off the, off the line. Uh, my energy pack has 8,700 watts. The current Turbado's standard come with 9,600 watts of energy, and you can actually boost that to over 13,000 watts of available energy from a single state of charge. So what do you think? Kind of interesting, right? So what we've done is shown you the inverter charger, what it does, why it does what it does in the sense of consuming energy, and because of its size, you can run multiple power-hungry appliances at once. What I'm gonna do now is actually turn off the AC, and we're gonna turn off the inverter to show you how, if the inverter is off, how much longer that can go. So now I'm gonna move over to the AC application and turn it off like that, set, give it a second, and it turns off. So what I'm gonna do is jump into the coach again and turn off the inverter, and we should be able to see this dial down to less than 100 watts, which is pretty amazing. Let me do that. Now the inverter button is right here. Um, it's on the display. You hit the button once to wake it, and literally one button turns the inverter on or off. TV goes off, you can see that. And we'll give the system a few seconds to kind of write itself here realizing that there's no consumption going on uh, from the inverter, nor from any of the big appliances. And now we're running on direct current DC power, which runs the lights, the water pump, the fridge freezer, and the max air fan. All the outlets are now um, not active. The AC will not work because we're running on direct current only. So you can see we're down, it's 137 watts of DC juice being consumed um, right now. Now we are getting a little tiny boost from the solar, uh, maybe of about um, 50 watts, um, which is kind of interesting, but not enough to really do anything meaningful to the energy pack in terms of charging. 
with the inverter now off, we can go back to how long will my energy pack last in its current condition, which is 34% state of charge. Now you might be asking, Scott, why are you at such a low state of charge? That's because I've been running rogue around the uh, greater Los Angeles area for most of the day today. I've had the AC running since about 10 a.m. It's currently 4 p.m. and that's why my state of charge is where it's at. But in its current condition of a 34% state of charge, you can see here now that I'm only consuming about 57 watts, which is what I would expect um, on direct current only. In that condition, I can last actually two days in the current consumption level off a 34% charged battery. Pretty cool, right? Now, if I had a 100% state of charge, I could last easily um, two to three days uh, with very tight control on my inverter use. Here you can see we've already gone to a day um, on a 34%. So the system balances itself in real time so that you can see what's going on. That's why I love this app. So at a moment's notice, I can see what's going uh, on with my system. And you can see it's just fluctuated back to two days. So somewhere between one and two days um, on a 34% state of charge is where we're gonna um, be able to um, use our system. Pretty amazing, right? So stay to the end, we're gonna give you another hot tip on the air conditioner. Um, cool tip on the um, AC also, we showed you an app for, the, uh, for Volta and we will show you an app for the Coleman Mach. Again, go to the App Store, Air Excel, A-I-R-E-X-E-L, or A-I-R-X-E-L, one of the two, is where you want to go to. If you go looking for Coleman Mach, you won't be able to find it. Air Excel is what makes the Coleman Mach brand and the app. What's cool about the app for the air conditioner is you can change it while you're up front, or you can change it while you're in bed without getting out of bed. It is tap and you adjust it just like this. It's Bluetooth connected to your device, just like the Volta app is connected to your device via Bluetooth. Volta's been working on this app and it's now cloud enabled so you can get notifications um, when you're away from your van and away from Bluetooth, which is kind of cool. So if you've learned anything, sure to appreciate a thumb up that helps YouTube share that out more readily and lets me know you like this. Um, comment below, is this helping demystify and helping you understand the power of a Volta system? Uh, the capacity that it it, um, it will charge to and discharge and running multiple appliances once just as if you're plugged into shore power and comment below is lithium something you're looking at you already have you know, what are your thoughts on lithium i'd be curious about that where are you watching from too the first thing we want to do is turn the inverter back on so again all you do is hit any button to wake the display like that and then you press the middle button on off for the inverter. And you hear the microwave beep as always. We should see the TV turn back on. Hey everybody, wait for it. There we go. And now we can actually work on the AC system. This summer has been exceptionally hot everywhere and I've been driving Route 66 through the hottest states in the hottest summer and I had to learn how to adapt my AC system to get the most out of the battery charge for an overnight uh, level of comfort. And this is what led me to this discovery. Let me show you on the app as we turn on the AC and show you how much consumption is being, con uh, battery life is being consumed with the AC fan on, compressor off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dial in, 69 degrees is the temperature, but I'm gonna do fan low just to help keep the noise down. We're gonna hit set, and we should hear and see the fan turn on for the air conditioner. So the fan is on. We can see that here indicated by low. Let's look at the amount of consumption now for the fan being on without the compressor. And this is kind of the punchline. So we know that the inverter by itself is gonna consume about 200 watts, maybe 300 by itself. But what we're seeing here is, is that the fan itself, in my experience, consumes about 50 to 100 watts with the compressor off. What I discovered is, if I could keep the fan on, and because the inverter's on already, it only consumes about another 100 watts to run the fan, I could run the compressor less frequent, which extended the range of my battery pack which is really important when it's hot out. So what I'm gonna do is turn the compressor on so we can see that that is what the power consumption is on the AC. It's not the fan. Big surprise, right? 
So again, looking at the water being consumed, about 300 to 400, kind of vacillates a little bit, right? So let's go to the app, running fan only, and let's adjust this to cool low where the compressor turns on. Hit set, watch. Now we can hear the compressor turning on and the air is considerably cooler. Let's look at the Volta app to see what's going on now. And we can see that the consumption line is already dropping significantly, consuming 1200 watts or so of electricity. So you might be saying, Scott, yeah, duh. But what I discovered is by dialing up the temperature, meaning the compressor runs less, having the fan run all the time, I could boost the amount of minutes between cycles of the compressor on or off. And in a 10 minute time period, I got to where the compressor would run for about a minute, maybe 90 seconds in a 10 minute period. And what that allowed me to do is have a very comfortable 77, 78 degree bedroom temperature and have that battery pack last way past what I would need for a comfortable night of sleep when I roll into a harvest host at 6 p.m. Everything's hot. That'll get me through until 6 or 8 a.m. for sure, but a comfortable night of sl uh, sleep. Again, the trick is, is to dial down the frequency of the compressor by dialing up the temperature on the thermostat and leaving the fan running. What do you think? One more little thing I wanna show you. Bonus trick. And the bonus trick are these little things right here. These are baffles. I think that's a technical name. This is the baffle. This directs air down and around, right? And then there's one in back. So what I discovered is, if this is my bedroom, the bed is down, this is the space that I want to cool, Right now, what this is doing, with these like in this mode, which it normally is, all, most of the air is coming out the front to cool this area. This is not the area that I want to cool when I'm in bed, which is back here. So the hot tip, the cool tip, is to close the front baffle like that. You can see it actually close, see that? And then open these bad boys up and the one in back, so all the energy, all the cold air, all the comfort is here while you're sleeping. And I have measured that, and because I have a thermostat or a thermometer right here, where it's 78 degrees in the back, 76 overnight, and up front I have my thermometer where it would show 86 degrees in the front half of the van. So I'm hoping that makes sense to you. And this is really effective in a 59G Travato floor plan because the bedroom very much is in the back. In the K floor plan, your whole rig is your bedroom. That's the deal with the two twin beds mid coach, right? So now the compressor just turned off. And as I've been talking about, we can see that the power consumption is quite a bit less, you know, back to our couple hundred, you know, 300 watts. And when the compressor kicks back on, that's when we have this big spike. So that's kind of the hot tip for you on how to maximize your lithium battery. Certainly true for Volta, probably for any good quality lithium system, is to manage your expectations on temperature number one and manage the compressor on off cycle on your above uh, roof AC unit. And then manage the baffles to even more tightly control the cool air going where it needs to be, that'd be on your hot body, and not trying to cool the cab where nobody is. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, I've been talking about making a video like this for a long time. Many of you have asked for this. I just wanna thank uh, Volta again for letting me be their brand ambassador for sponsoring this video. And what we do here is we learn, we share, you decide what's best for you. You probably have a couple of hot tips. Put those down below. I would love to know them. And if you have Volta questions, be sure to put those in. Every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Central, we have What's Up Wednesday, a live Q&A, and we have Volta come on on a regular basis, and we answer a lot of Volta-specific questions, lithium, on What's Up Wednesday. So until we see you again soon, I wish you to stay cool and journey on. Bye for now.